Father, thank you uh, for this time. And uh, Lord, we all come here to desire uh, to know more of you and your word. And so we ask here in uh, Genesis 27 that you would, uh, that you would uh, teach us, train us, grant us the knowledge of your word uh, that we might grow thereby. And uh, we just love you. And thank you for uh, allowing us to be a family, Lord, and part of your family. And uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, you guys remember last time we were talking about Isaac and what's his wife's name? Rebecca. Rebecca. So, that through, there was a promise though that through Isaac, all the nations would come from him, right? That the promise uh, that they would all be blessed, basically, all the nations that would come from him. And <clears throat> then it was speaking about the seed, right? The promise seed that would come through him, his line, and that was obviously speaking of the Messiah, and so there's a quick verse right here, um, Paul would talk about him in Galatians 3.16, saying, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made, he does not say, and to seeds, right, as of many, plural, but as of one, singular, and to your seed, who is Christ, Paul says, so in Genesis 7, 27, um, what? Oh. Um, it's a familiar story, obviously, right? We all know about Isaac and, and the family, kind of, uh, this is where all the clashing starts, right? This is where all the stuff kind of hits and, and begins. So either um, Isaac tries to manipulate God's plan, or tries to help God out with his plan. Either or, I'm not too sure really what his mindset was at that time, right? Or his whatever it was. But in chapter 25, verse 23, if you guys remember last time we were talking about, God told Rebecca that in her, in her stomach, right, that she had two nations. And the older would serve the younger, and that was a prophecy, right? That was just that was what was going to happen. God said it, right? Just like God spoke in creation, and it was same thing. God said it was going to happen. It, it, obviously, it's happening. So uh, they knew the prophet, and the prophecy is simple: the older will serve the younger. And that's obviously contrary to the norm, right? The older always got the inheritance, always got the blessings, right? Always got the first fruit or whatever it was birthright. <coughs> so, yeah, right here is a, this is a, a, obviously a prophecy. It's one of those like, whoa, things, right? So, that was God's purpose, which I thought was interesting before they were even born, right? Before they even, it was, it was already spoken of them. Um, <coughs> so like here. Why does it do that? I should just install it and get it over with. <laughs> I was quitting it comes on once a week. Um, so, as we're going to see in the study today, obviously, Isaac is not really happy about God's plan because he's not going to go with God's plan. He's going to try to help God and, you know, God, this is kind of how things go here. So, let me handle it for you and kind of going against what God said. So, he's trying to either change God's plan or trying to alter God's plan. I don't know what he's doing, but Rebecca, his wife... Um, thought that God needed basically help, right? And she's trying to come alongside God and, and helping him out in basically what he said, right? The prof She knew about the prophecy, right? God spoke directly to them. And so it seems like Rebecca's coming in here and she's like, Jacob, you got it all wrong. You're not supposed to give it to Esau. You're supposed to give it to Jacob. So we're going to, I'm going to conjure up some kind of plan and we're going to see that plan right here. So she tries to assist God in it, but it's sad. Um, but I'm sure that we all fall into these categories, right? Of trying to help God out, trying to work in our own flesh, trying to, you know, muster up something in order to, hey God, look what I did for you, right? Or I'm going to go on this mission trip, and it's a forced mission trip, like you did it, it wasn't a work of God. Or you go and you try to, you know what I mean? A lot of people attempt things in our own flesh. Or is that just me? No. 
and said, Spoon, oh, all right. I want to be next to you, holy man. Oh. Somebody sitting next to me? Because <laughs> you're the only holy guy in this room. <clears throat> but no, um, yeah, it is sad though, right? So it, it's interesting though. If, if God's plan though, sometimes it hurts, right? Sometimes it brings aggravation or, you know, pain, right? And that pain can last for years and years and years. So sometimes God has us on the path of instruction, correction, rebuke, um, whatever, right? It's just one of His paths. Uh, one path that I thought of, though, throughout this study that it doesn't really talk about it, is just waiting, right? We've all been there where we're just, we, we know God has a plan for something. He calls us to somewhere or something, right? And, but He doesn't want us to be there yet. And so we just wait until we hear him say, okay, go, <laughs> right? And we're just kind of just waiting. So that's a, kind of what I realized with God's plan. But, um, and I think it's funny too that oftentimes we, uh, maybe you're skilled in an area, right? Like, okay, we have a need in the church, guys, and this is the need. God, you know, put it on our hearts and this is what, you know, needs to be done. And whatever area that is, maybe you're the only one skilled and qualified in that area because you have a degree or whatever it is, right? And But what if God didn't want to use you, though, in that area of skill? You're like, but I'm the only one. Obviously, you're going to use me, right? But then God uses somebody else perfectly, and then you look back at it, and you're like, I was pretty foolish. I was dumb. Wow, to think that I could have done, you know, in and of my own flesh... Obviously, when God wants to do something, He wants to do something, right? And He's going to use whoever He wants. But there's always those times where we think we're like, you know, I'm the pastor. Of course He's going to use me for this teaching, right? When, when I pray, that's actually what goes through my mind every time before I pray for a study. Like, Lord, just teach us, you know, and, and I'm thinking in my head, one of these Sundays, somebody else is going to like teach. <coughs> Or it could be after the study, right? Where we're, we open up the discussion and the Lord just wants to speak to all of us, but maybe within one second or ten seconds or, you know, a minute of something, you know, somebody else is saying. So I'm always reminded it's not always me, you know, it's always the, the Lord anyways, which I'm always blessed at the end too because God always does speak to me uh, during the study and then after because it always comes out different. I don't know how. Um, but interesting. But so that's exactly what's happening here in the chapter. I just wanted to set the stage. It's going to be a really quick study. So if you guys want to um, ask any questions or add to or whatever you want to do. But there's basically four things I want to go over about God's plan uh, that we see here in chapter 25. So the first is Isaac's plan in verses 1 through 4. Look at verse 1. <clears throat> it says... Now it came to pass, when Isaac was old and his eyes were so dim that he could not see, that he called Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son. And he answered him, Here I am. <clears throat> and then he said, Behold now, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now therefore, so he thinks he's going to die any moment, right? And he's like, I better hurry up and <clears throat> get things going here. But... In reality, he's actually going to live um, another, uh, I forget how many more years. He's going to live like another 35 years, I believe it is. But look at verse 3. Now therefore, please take your weapons, your quiver, and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me, and make me savory food such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. So since... <coughs> Isaac had a different plan than God's plan, we're going to see some stuff happening, obviously, right? Some drama happening here. <clears throat> so between chapter 26 and chapter 27, by the way, just to give you guys a little uh, math, <coughs> Isaac is about, this is like a 35-year period of time right here, right? From chapter 26 and chapter 28. So Isaac's about 135 years old at this time, which would make Esau 75 years old and Jacob um, 45 years old. Wow. Interesting, huh? I pictured them a lot younger. Yep. 
Process. What? <laughs> What'd you say? You I'm said Esau. You guys are away. Esau was 75 and Jacob was 45 when they came out at the same time. You guys are all Time war? <laughs> so they're twins, right? They came out of the Too same much room. Star Trek or what? 45, 45. Thanks, thanks. I was just, I'd wake you guys up. So, Isaac was sold, right? He thought he was going to die, according to verse 2 and verse, right? So he's May I ask, Jesus told Rebekah that in her womb were two nations. Yes. Did he tell that to Isaac or just to Rebekah? Mm. Because why Rebecca. is Isaac now changing his mind? Well, Isaac Going knew against about God. It. Yeah, well... See, if he knew that the older was going to serve the younger, then he knew that he had to give Jacob the blessing. Right. <clears throat> but he's not doing that. So. Exactly. And that's where I'm going yeah. with, with, the, with the study of, as far as what's the heart, what is, what's Isaac thinking, right? Like, is he trying to, you know, manipulate or what is he, he's trying to, he's trying to do something to help God out here, but God's obviously wrong. If that's the case. And so he's trying to like, you know, make something happen here. <clears throat> so according to verse 1 through 4, Isaac knew from chapter, and that's chapter 25 verse 23, right? Where where God spoke to Rebekah that Jacob would um, be blessed and not Esau. So the prophecy God gave was very, very clear, right? That the older would serve the, the younger. So, and, and the younger would be blessed by God, and through his seed, the Messiah would come. You want, you want to look over here? <laughs> Malachi! Well, he was fine until I waved to him. <laughs> He's all, hey! He called me? He was playing, and then I waved to him, and he, he no, kind of came over. <laughs> so, okay, so, but Isaac thought his plan was better than God's plan. That's where I'm going with it, right? He thinks he's, he's got it going on, and God's kind of, you know, I don't know what he's thinking here. <clears throat> so he tells Esau, go, go hunt, right? Go get me that savory food, you know? Go, go prepare it, and the, uh, that food that I love, right? That he's obviously eaten uh, from Esau's meals before and he, prefer, he prefers his meals <clears throat> so i thought about this and i was like why why would isaac do that right why would isaac not go according to god's plan and according to verse four this is what i'm, I'm just if we're just looking at scripture right we're not I, I honestly i didn't even look at commentaries or anything but if you're just looking at scripture what do you see here in verse four notice it says and make me savory food such as I love and bring it to me that I may eat that my soul may bless you before I die. Notice he loves savory food, right? And and now I love savory food too, but man, this this guy, you know, he I, I don't know if you guys catch this, but I'm I'm thinking <coughs> He's kind of going with his belly here, right? He's going with his appetite, and he's not going with what the Lord said, right? He's getting God's will out of the way for the flesh, right? To fulfill the flesh, in a sense. But notice in chapter 25, and it's in verse 28. Oh, I didn't put it up there. Um, that's basically when God told Rebecca, though, right? That the, the younger would be blessed, right? The older would serve the younger, and so, but he loved, well, I'll just turn there really quick. Chapter 25, verse 28. It says, uh, And Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. So why, did, why didn't Isaac love Jacob? Because he didn't. He didn't go hunting and he didn't cook. Jacob was more like a mama's boy. He was a mama's boy. He did. He stayed home and he tended the sheep and he cleaned the house. <laughs> he did the wash. Yeah. You know, stuff like that while Isaac was, or uh, Esau was the hunter. Yeah. You know? 
He was he was the man. I could see that too, kind of being like a disappointment almost to Isaac. You know, like Isaac's like, man, I really want to take Jacob. You know, hunting, be a man. Mm. But so obviously you could kind of see where that that heart for uh, Esau is. But notice it was all about food at the same time. So as I looked into this, it's an interesting picture, obviously, that Isaac is trying to fulfill the lust of his flesh, right? The appetite, the, you know, fulfill his stomach rather than the will of God. So he focused more on the physical food rather than the spiritual food, you can say, right? Or the spiritual in general. He wanted to fulfill his own plan. And so Paul talks about something similar to that. In Philippians 3.19, he says, Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. <coughs> so I think there's a lesson for all of us here, right? We the, the only way Isaac would not consider God's plan is basically because it was all about him. Did you guys catch that? About what he wanted to eat, about who he wanted to bless, right? And, and what he commanded Isaac, right? Or uh, Esau, right? It's all about him and his, his goals, his plans, <coughs> and what he wanted to see. So I don't know if you guys caught that, but how he desired it all, you know, to play out. So it's about Isaac and not the Lord. So rather than submitting to the will of God, he's, he's, he's doing his own thing. So... I know none of us have a problem with that, right? We no, all, never. No, yep, never. There it is. They just destroy it. It's like a bomb went off over here. It's, it's not banners like that. Okay, thing. silly girl. It's like, yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting that we, um, we find our way better than God's way, right? That's kind of where I'm getting at. And we think that our way, you know, like, Lord, it's just logical. It's just, it makes sense. And there's a time period, and this time period is coming to an end. So you're obviously not doing anything. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in there and help you because that's just, that's what we're trained to do, right? That's our world, our physical world. But God says that we are to walk by faith, right? And it's a hard thing to do unless we're trained in walking by faith. And so, <clears throat> Isaac, obviously, is focused on what would satisfy him and fulfill the lust of his flesh, right? So God's ways are always better, obviously, than choosing our flesh. I don't have to go through that. Look at Scripture. Isaiah 55, 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, God says, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, I love that. So it's, it's foolishness on our part to think that our way is better than God's ways. Right? So that's feeding our flesh, which is ultimately what? It's pride, right? It speaks of, it's, pride started in your heart, and then it, it always creeps off into wherever area of sin your life is, right? Caught up in. It, it, it always, the core is pride. So... Let's come to the second thing. It gets worse. <laughs> you guys. Oh, man. Um, this is Rebecca's plan, right? So look at verse 5 through 17. Um, do you want to help me read here? Kind of hard to do without a Bible. You know, oh, busted. What are you doing? Well, it's on my phone, and I left my phone oh, at home. Goodness. All phone, right, I'll read it. Phone home. <clears throat> it says, Now Rebecca was listening when Isaac spoke to Esau, his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt game and to bring it. So Rebekah spoke to Jacob, her son, uh oh, she's stepping in, saying, Indeed, I heard your father speak to Esau, your brother, saying, Bring me game and make savory food for me, that I may eat it and bless you in the presence of the Lord before my death. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice according to what I command you. Did she forget that? Isaac just said, in the presence of the Lord. She's, you know, like, let's lie in the presence of the Lord. Like, she obviously knows that God is in the room, you know. He's, he, he sees all things. Anyways, now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to what I command you. 
right? So Jacob's like 45 years old here, and she's saying, do what I say. Go now to the flock and bring me from there two choice kids of the goats, and I will make savory food for them from them for your father, such as he loves. Then you shall take it to your father, that he may eat it, and that he may bless you before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Look, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man. I am a smooth-skinned man. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Uh, perhaps my father will fill me, and I shall seem to be a deceiver to him, and I shall bring a curse on myself and not a blessing. But his mother said to him, Let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go. Get them for me. And he went and got them, which... This is interesting because maybe, maybe um, Rebecca knew that Jacob or Isaac was going to bless Esau and maybe she already prepared uh, the goats, right? Kept them away from everybody and, and maybe planned this all out before this moment. Maybe this is like a drawn out thing. As you're reading it, you don't see that, but I'm just saying, what if it was? What if these goats were, you know? Always sitting there, nobody was allowed to eat them or anything like that. So, I oh, don't know, just throwing it out there. Um, I don't really see that. No, well, it doesn't say that. No, well, she she, she's, she's, waiting, she's waiting on Isaac, you know. Yeah. All of a sudden, Isaac says this and she hears it. And it's a panic. And then, boom, then the idea comes into her head. I don't think she set these things off to the side waiting for just this moment to happen. I don't think she knew this moment was going to happen until she heard it. Okay. I like that one too. <laughs> no, well, actually, you see more of that right here because yeah. she is. She's saying, "Now go, right? Like, go yeah. get it." So it is. It's more of a panic, like. And I think he would know which ones to take out. He would stand there and think, oh, "Okay, which one do I pick?" <laughs> you know, he he's been around sheep all his life. Yeah. He knows what the choices ones look like. Right. You know. Yeah, <clears throat> and notice it says, and he and he went and got them and brought them to his mother, and his mother made savory food such as his father loved, and then Rebecca took the choice clothes of her elder son Esau, which were with her in the house. Now he's forty five years old, but it's his clothes are with her in the house. So that's interesting. And put them on Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. Then she gave the savory food and the bread, which she had prepared, into the hand of her son, Jacob. Now, very interesting stuff, right? So if you thought Isaac's plan was bad, obviously Rebecca's plan is worse. <laughs> it's, it's pretty bad. So in verse 5 through 10 that we just read, um, we read all the way to 17, but Rebecca knew that Jacob should have received the blessing, right? And so obviously she's running to go and help Jacob out. Like, hey, Jacob's in trouble. He's not going to get the blessing. Oh, no. Right? Oh, God's the prophecy is not going to come true. I'm going to look like a false prophet, right? Like, oh, no one's going to believe me. Ah. So that's what God told her in Genesis 25. I even got it right here. You guys can believe I might as well read it. It says, And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two peoples shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. So, but she was not willing to, obviously, trust in the Lord, or not willing to even wait on the Lord if she did trust in the Lord. So, I don't know. I'm assuming, but I do know it was one or the other. I'm not sure which one her problem was, but um, was she unable to trust in the Lord, you know, to, that Jacob, you know, was supposed to receive the blessing and not Esau? Or was she not, you know, willing to say, hey, I'm going to wait on the Lord. This sounds like it's, you know, it's all going to happen and, you know, Esau is going to get the blessing. But I'll just wait to see what the Lord might do. He might intervene. You know, something might happen. She didn't do that. She wasn't willing to do that and see what God could do. But I, I'm not sure which one it was. But I do know she ended up, obviously, that we just read, she ended up taking measures in her own hand, right? And 
and that's never good. So she tried to work out her own plan in order to work out God's plan, right? I mean, let me help God make out His plan in my life. Realize this, contrary to what you guys believe, God doesn't need us, right? <laughs> he doesn't need us. He doesn't need us. He doesn't need us at all. His, his plan is going to come to fruition whether we're, you know, on board or not on board. It, in the end, we already know. He already worked it all out, right? It was like a beautiful picture when you look back at it and you're like, oh, wow, look at that. So to us, may, what, you know, may seem bad from what the enemy's doing in our lives is actually turning out to be good, you know, in the end. But we don't see it at that moment. So the truth is... God doesn't need us. In fact, when we get to Numbers 22, we'll see that God, obviously, He uses a donkey, right, to accomplish His will. So if He could use a donkey, I'm pretty sure He could use us. <laughs> it's, a, it's an easy thing. Um, are you going to say something? <clears throat> so, I thought it was interesting, too. I forget the passage, but Jesus even says, Hey, uh, if... Oh, even the rocks will cry out, though, right? So even if we, right, don't even, you know, worship the Lord, basically, even the rocks will worship the Lord. So He doesn't really need us, right, for, He doesn't need us, need us, to, to make Him anything greater or less, right? He is God. He is who He is. So, uh, but it's, it's that relationship that He desires. So why do, we, why do we take matters in our own hands? What do you guys... Why do you guys think we even do that as humans? Do you think by our age we would know better by now? Why do we still do it? We're sinners. We're sinners? Yep. Who won? We have. <laughs> we have. We have problems understanding no matter how many times you see it you know uh, not all of us are like that but we take matters into our own hands like George Verver there and uh, uh, at the uh, the home for the kids you know the homeless kids and so forth you know they had absolutely no food on the table and yet each day each morning it was so okay let's, let's thank the Lord for the food <laughs> and the uh, kids are looking around and going there's no food and he says let's thank the Lord for the food and all of a sudden a, a truck breaks down outside uh -huh. you know and it's like a bread truck or, yeah. or a chicken truck or yeah. something you know yeah. <clears throat> that's what we should do not all of us are like that you know what we we do is we, we see with our eyes and we mm. we start to figure things out and says uh, I need to step in here and do this yeah. you know and God's like up in heaven calling his angels and say, watch this idiot. Watch what he does. <laughs> watch it's this true. bonehead. Watch him screw everything it's up. True. It's true. You know? True. We have we do. We just have a problem trusting the Lord. You know? Yeah. It's like I've been praying for thirty years for my you know, mom, my sister, and my brother. Mm -hmm. Nothing. It's like talking to walls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I, I continue to pray. You know, it's the Lord's will whether He wants to save him or not. It's right. not my will. Right. You know, I just say, Lord, it's Your will whether You want to save him or and not. And He does want to you know? save them. <clears throat> and clear. and it's up to them. Right. You know. <clears throat> so. Yeah, I I agree. So yeah, yes, it's an area of trust, but it's also an area of waiting. You know, that we don't want to do, right? We don't want to trust Him. We don't want to wait on Him. And it's tragic to even see that. Well, it's foolishness to, to think that God can't accomplish His will without us. That somehow God needs us to accomplish His will, right? To be done in our lives. So this is, this is silliness. The Bible even says um, in Romans 12, 19, Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, rather, but rather give place to wrath for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. So even, you know, it's a big deal, right? But we need to step back and just trust that the Lord, you know, will accomplish His will with or without us. And He'll do what He's going to do. And those people that have done bad things, we're, we're going to be judged for everything that we've done, right? 
and people that have done, you know, hurtful things to us or whatever, we got to let it go. <laughs> Just let the Lord handle it, right? Don't, whatever situation it might be, this is kind of in that sense of, you know, let the Lord be the avenger, right? Let him, he's got it. It's his plan. So, obviously, he's got it taken care of. And then, uh, in verse 11 through 14 that we just read, obviously, Rebecca, right, she's, even though she's not, you know, doing a good thing, I kind of realized, I was like, wait a minute, she's a good cook. <laughs> right? Good, good cooking's lasting, right? But good looking is passing. I... I like that. I'm glad my wife was in here. Mm. Ah! Yeah. There was a song back in the 60s. I think it was by, I'm not sure. I think it was the Commodores. I'm not sure. <laughs> but it says, marry an ugly wife. She'll stay with you for the rest of your life. That's it. Marry an ugly wife. Yeah, see, there it is. I'm glad we got a singer in the group here. <laughs> well, I don't know. Did you guys catch that, though, how, like, Esau must have been super hairy? Yeah. Because she put a goat, like, picture a goat, and she yeah. put the goat skin on his hands, on Jacob. <clears throat> and then we'll see that right now, but Abraham's going to fill it, or Isaac is going to fill it and be like, oh, you feel like my son. That's a, that's like... That's a hairy man. <laughs> mm. Kind of like that one guy is like filled, his whole face is full of hair and I don't know, it's pretty hairy. But anyways, um, but notice right here in verse 17, Jacob, Jacob's not into the plan, right? Not so much, right? He's kind of like still wavering, like, uh, what's going to happen? But Jacob, he doesn't object to the plan that it's wrong. <clears throat> That's, I don't know if you caught that, but I was like, wait a minute. Let's look at, okay, so we were looking at Isaac, we were looking at Rebecca. Then when you're kind of looking at Jacob and his response to Rebecca, it's interesting because his objection was more of because he would get caught. Did you catch that? What if, uh, what if he fills me and I'm, I'm, you know, like, I'm, oh, I don't have any hair. Like, I'm going to get caught. It was more so about getting caught instead of saying, Hey, Mom, that's sin. I'm not going to sin against God, right? Kind of like Joseph, right? He didn't run like Joseph or, or like David. David even, uh, even, uh, even said, Hey, uh, that his sin was against God. I think it's like Psalm 55 or somewhere around there. But he didn't do any of that. So he didn't be like Elijah, call down fire, right? <laughs> But he didn't, he didn't do anything. He, in fact, he just went with the flow. And, and his plan, his heart, his mind was make sure I don't get caught and let's let this plan go through because I want to be blessed. Right? He obviously wanted it. He desired it. And he was the deceiver, the, you know, the yeah. foot catcher. So, very interesting. I kind of, I don't know, saw that. But... Yeah, he'll catch her, but he, he could have told, you know, his mom, hey, let's just wait on the Lord, you know, and see what uh, the Lord might do. Let's just what, back One has to wonder what his, nobody knows except for God and them, <laughs> what his life was like from the day he was born to this moment, you know, what his mindset was towards God, you know, did he feel like, Tricking God was just a, a natural thing because that's the way he was. Did he pull tricks on his brother for all yeah. these years? You know what I mean? <laughs> Did he steal things from his brother? Did, you know? Right. Did he trade sheep with his right. brother? You know? No, nobody knows his mindset <laughs> as to what happened in all those years in the relationship between him and his brother. True. You know? True. And now all of a sudden it, he, you're thrust into this situation and you're saying, well, what was he thinking here, mm -hmm. you know? A lot of people don't think, <clears throat> and that's the problem. Oh. A lot of people don't see the consequence and they just do it. And then once they get caught, 
then they then they start this consequences start to like sink in. They're like, oh, <coughs> what did I do, right? Hmm. It's it, because they're in the moment, and they allow themselves to be in the flesh. When and when that time happens, it's kind of like. So if I tell you don't think of elephants, you're going to be thinking of elephants, right? So the Bible says to hold. Basically, your mind captive, right? Put your mind in captivity. Put it in bondage, right? Under, basically, the Word of God. So if I say, don't think of elephants, you're thinking of elephants. But what if I say, did you know 7 times 7 equals 14? But it could be 27 if you just threw another 4 in there. And you're like, wait, what? What I did is I got your mind thinking... <coughs> something else besides the elephant, right? And that's what the Word of God does. So when you're in the moment and you're in the sin, you know, it, it's enticing you and, you're, and your, your mind, uh, lust is a big thing, right? So whatever area of lust it might be, your, your mind's going there, but you gotta stop it. Boom! You gotta repent, right? You gotta turn direction and you gotta put the boat, right? Whatever it is. And, and read the Word because the Word starts to transform us, conform us to His image, but it's filling our mind. And what it's doing is it's actually, it's, as it's filling, it's basically deleting all that stuff, right? That we allowed in there. And I think it's uh, Martin Luther, and you probably already know the quote better than I do, but he said, you can't, you can't stop the birds from flying above your head, but you can stop them from making a nest in your hair, right? So... It's the same concept. We, we we can have that control. So I think I think Jacob uh, was probably in that moment, but obviously not, you know, surrendering, <coughs> submitting to the will of God at that moment. Yeah, and and just by his words, you you can tell he's, you know, he's in fear that this ain't gonna work. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, what if, what if? Right. Once you start getting what ifs from people, you right. know. <clears throat> So he, he goes with the, the plan, right? And you know, the, the, the interesting thing is, because he went with this plan, he's never going to see his mother again, right? She, she ends up saying, hey, why don't you, well, we're, we'll read that right now. But he leaves, but he'll never see her again. She's going to die, you know, and, and that'll be the last moment, basically, he'll ever see her. Um, so very interesting. So obviously his sin is going to have an effect on everybody, right? Your sin's going to have... A price to it. Every sin has a price. Thus, the judgment. Right? We're always going to be judged based on whatever we do. So, um, obviously, his brother wants to kill him. Right? It just keeps going. Your sin has an effect on everybody around you. It's like a ripple effect. So even the things that we do on our own, where nobody can see, obviously God can see it. And I realize this personally in my life. If there's, it's like. <laughs> It's a tiny little thing. Nobody, I mean, I know it's kind of a sin, but it's kind of a sin, right? It's not really a sin, and but I realize that little thing can have a huge effect on everybody around you. And you don't, they don't, they could be billions of miles away, right? But it's still, sin always will catch you, right? It'll find you out, and it'll just, it'll rip you apart, right? So either let your sin expose you, right? Or you expose your sin by repenting, right? <clears throat> Return to the Lord. And what I do when I catch myself still is I'll come to the Lord and be like, Oh, Lord, forgive me. I'm so sorry for that. Like, oh, it's so dumb. But what I don't do, that's not repentance. That's just forgiveness, right? That's like, Lord, forgive me for, um, for this. I just want to be right in your eyes because I'm still going to do what I want to do. Right? Like, just say that you're going to accept what I'm doing, basically. And God's like, blah. <laughs> I, I can't even hear you because, you know, this is not repentance. But you need to repent before you even confess, right? You can ask for forgiveness. Otherwise, it's hypocrisy. It's not even anything. So instead of taking, the, you know, a stand for the truth, Jacob, you know, goes with this plan. And, and the Bible even says, speaking about sin, you know, that... Sin always has a price to it. It says, Who will render to each one according to his deeds? Obviously speaking of the Lord, you know, the penalty for our sins. God's going to render to each one 
according to everything they've done, right? Everything that we have said. So Jacob will, he's going to find this out the hard way, <clears throat> which I think is interesting. But let's come to the third thing, the unfolding of the plan, right? Look at verse 18. Here's the unfolding. It just starts to unfold. This, this plan kind of falls apart. Um, and notice how Jacob continues in this scheme, right? Verse 18, um, it says, So he went to his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your, your firstborn. I have done just as you told me. Please arise, sit, and eat of my game, that your soul may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found, found it so quickly, my son? And he said, because the Lord, your God, brought it to me. Wow, he's profaning the name wow. of the Lord right here, obviously, right? He's like a false teacher, just trying to get favor. And what is that called? That's, um, anyways, I forget. Um, but look at verse, okay, verse 22, it says, uh, verse 21, Then Isaac said to Jacob, Please come near, that I may fill you, my son. So Isaac's doing the right thing by testing him, whether you are really my son Esau or not. So Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, and he felt him, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. Which I thought was funny. Like, why didn't Jacob, like, Hey, it's me, uh, it's all. It was yeah, like, his voice couldn't have been too much different <laughs> than his brother's, you know. Yeah. <coughs> and, and, he, and he did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. Then he said, are you really my son Esau? Wow. And he said, I am. He lied again. And said, bring it near to me and I will eat of my son's game so that my soul may bless you. And so he brought it near to him, and he ate, and he brought him wine, and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near, and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his clothing, and blessed him, and said, Surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field, which the Lord has blessed. Therefore may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. And let people serve you, and nations bow down to you. Be master over your <clears throat> brethren, and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Curse be everyone who curses you, and blessed be those who bless you. Oh, man. So three times, I don't know if you got that, but three times Jacob lied. Boom, 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 boom. Right? And it always starts out like something small, and then it snowballs effect, right? It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and <coughs> harder to get out of. The, the one thing I caught, he says, the Lord, your God. Yeah. Not the Lord, our God. Yep. Yeah. Busted. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. So he had a chance, obviously, to repent, right? And turn, you know, to his father and be like, look, all right, I was going with this plan and it didn't work out. I'm sorry, you know, I, was, I lied to you. And I wonder if I wonder if Isaac would have been like, that was a really good thing that you just did. That was really just. Let me let me bless you now, right? Instead of Esau, because of what, you know? I, I don't know. I just wonder what it could have been like. But when we find ourselves at that moment, you know, should I repent? Should I, you know? I know I'm in sin. I know I just messed up. But... We need to, like I just talked about our mindset, right? We need to, we need to put our mind in captivity and just say, you know what? You're gonna listen to the Lord's will, right? You're gonna, you put your body in bondage, basically, and you say, no, you, you listen, right? I'm not gonna listen to you. You, you, you already got me in trouble, so, you know, don't talk to yourself. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> But if you don't, your sin's obviously going to get stronger and stronger, you know? It gets worse. So, Jacob did receive that, that blessing after all, right? Verse 28 and 29, like, was promised in 25. But it was not like he... I don't want you to get the picture of, like, he lied, and that's why he got the promise, right? That's why he got the blessing, because there's some wacky teachers out there, like, Oh, it's because Jacob lied, 
And he, you know, coordinated God's blessing, and that's how he got it. So you can go through life, and you can lie, and you can cheat, and you can, and you make it big, and God blesses you because you already have all that. And, you know, he uses that, and you can bless the church, you know. There's always these weirdos, but obviously in ch chapter 25, God already said, hey, I'm going to do it. So it was God who did it. It wasn't Jacob, you know, that was blessed because of himself. So... The point's simple, right? God, God's always going to accomplish His plan whether He uses us or not, right? It's basically what it is. So, it doesn't give us a, a, a license to sin, right? Don't misunderstand me. The Bible is very clear. Um, if we are faithless, He remains faithful. He cannot deny Himself. It's, the Lord's just going to, He's faithful. That's why He blesses us, right? We choose to mess up, and yet He still blesses us. Not because of us, right? It's our, <coughs> it's our sin nature to fall, but it's his nature to bless because he's God. Um, so realize how easy it would have been for Jacob, right? If he would have just submitted to the Lord and look at the hard life that he went through. And, you know, he could have skipped all that. And I look at my life and I'm like, Lord, you know, if I could just do it the easy way. <laughs> like, uh... I would rather do that, you know? Why why lie and cheat or whatever it may be and go through all this hard stuff in my life? Why, you know, if I don't have to? So it's a good thing to train ourselves right now to know what the Bible says, know what, you know, what we ought to do so that we're not foolish at the time and just ignorant and be like, oh, I don't know what else to do, you know? I see it, and that's why I go for it. Oh. <laughs> you know, we, we can control ourselves. And obviously, that's part of the fruit of the Spirit that God is doing in our lives, right? So, interesting. Um, but I, I think it always goes back to Proverbs 3, right? Trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. No, lean on our own understanding. But in all our ways, acknowledge Him. He will direct our path. So, not only trusting the Lord, too, but... Also waiting on the Lord, right? Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with the wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So let's look at the problem of the plan. Um, this is verse 30 to 46. This is the end, right? And the problem, I think, I kind of looked over it a few times. Actually, it's been, what, two weeks since I've been looking over it? I kind of see a threefold thing happening here, right? Jacob's sin was affirmed, right? It was out in the open, obviously, it's immediate, you know? Isaac's like, oh, look what happened. Oh, and we'll see that right now, verses 30 to 37. But all of his <coughs> deceiving was exposed, right? And it didn't take long. Um, so it's, it's foolishness on our part to think that we can sin and just get away with it. Nobody's going to, you know, know about it. You know, that, that we can, you know, do our own plan. So let's look at verse 41. Is it 41? 30. No, 30, yeah. Look at verse 30 to 46. Or 37. It says, Now it happened as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. Interesting. Right at that moment. Boom. <coughs> so it was fast, and God was blessing him. He also had made savory food and brought it to his father, and said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's game, that your soul may bless me. And his father Isaac said to him, Who are you? So he said, I am your son, your firstborn Esau. Then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, Who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came, and I have blessed him, and, it, and indeed he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry, and said to his father, Bless me also, my father. But he said, Your brother came with deceit and has taken away your blessing. And Esau said, it is, is he not rightly named Jacob? 
for he has supplanted me these two times, and he took away my birthright, and now look, he has taken away my blessing. And he said, have you not res uh, reserved a blessing for me? Then Isaac answered and said to Esau, indeed I have made him your master, and all his brethren have given to him, I have given to him as, as servants, with grain and wine I have sustained him. What have I, what shall I do now for you, my son? Well, it goes on, but interesting. So if you ever think that nobody's watching, obviously the Lord is watching, <coughs> right? We're not alone. So remember, uh, I, I think of when God told the children of Israel, you know, go to the promised land. And there was Gad, I think it was half the tribe of Gad, and the whole tribe of Reuben, and Moses said, come on, let's go. And they were like, no, we like this, uh, I think it was the eastern side of the, the Jordan right there. And, uh, and they were like, no, we're going to stay right here. Oh, later on, I think it was Manasseh. They would, they would stay with them right there, the three. But Moses was like, fine, you guys can have this land. But when it comes to the time of war, you guys better get your soldiers together, right? Come marching on and just battle out with us and war with us here. And if you don't, you know, you're going to be crying like a baby. <laughs> but if you don't, uh, it is number 32, 23. Uh, but if you do not do so, then take note, you, ha you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. So we need to understand, obviously, that God sees it all, and your sin mm -hmm. will find you out, right? But notice it's against the Lord. Did you notice that Esau told a lie in that thing? He says he robbed me twice. With his birthright. Yeah, but he didn't, Jacob uh -huh. didn't rob him. Yeah, he gave it away willingly. Ooh. Just see. And so he told his father he robbed me twice. He tricked me twice and he didn't. Jacob only tricked him once this last time. The other time, Esau willingly gave away his birthright just for a bowl of food. So he lied to his father. See, so you could tell there's, there wasn't much love between Jacob and Esau to begin with. Yeah. You know, they must have been at it, like yeah. almost constantly. Right. You know. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, well, Jacob's still pretty crafty, though, and deceitful, yes, he is. right? Like, his character. So, interesting. Um, obviously, God sees it all, right? So, Jacob can't get away with it. Um, the secondly, Jacob's brother was affected, right? So, obviously, es Esau was affected by the sin. It says in verse 38, And Esau said to his father, have you only one blessing, my father? Bless me, me also, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Then Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. But by your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass when you become restless that you shall break his yoke from your neck. Now, um... So Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father at hand, then I will kill my brother Jacob. Obviously the blessing for Jacob was, and your, um, what was it? Uh, Cursed be everyone who curses you. So obviously he's, he's planning, he's harboring a curse right within his heart against Jacob. So he's, Thereby, he's cursing himself, right? He's becoming a curse, which is uh, which is crazy. So Isaac, he he doesn't die for another forty-five years. Obviously, Jacob or Isaac thinks he's, he thinks he's gonna die, and he goes on like forever. <laughs> he doesn't die. So our our sins, it's always gonna affect somebody else's life, and that's the thing that I got out of this is um, Isaac's life was affected, right? Esau's life obviously is affected. Um, but Rebecca's life's going to be, everybody's life's going to be affected because of this, right? They're all in on it. But even this, the slave peoples, right? Like, you know, the, they're, they got to serve Jacob now. And there's a whole, I wonder what their attitude is. Like, wait a minute, we were supposed to be with Esau. 
like, oh, who's this guy, you know, and in like the service, <coughs> you know, I wonder if there's going to be tension and, you know, later yeah. on when, when, it, when they do, but just interesting, Esau failed to understand, though, that I think, obviously, because he's pointing the finger at Jacob, <coughs> but Esau failed to understand that Jacob's sin was not against him alone, it was obviously against God, right? We talked about that earlier. First um, John three four says, "Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness." So who wrote the law? God wrote the law. So thus, you are sinning against God when you break the law. And Joseph understood that, right? In Genesis thirty nine nine, you know, he, how can I sin against the Lord, right? It wasn't against Potiphar. David, in Psalm 51, 4, against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. So, he didn't sin against anybody else. We, we, when we sin, it's never against another person, right? It's always only against God, because you can't sin against another person. You can wrong them, but it's not sin on their part, right? On your part against that person. It's always against God alone. Which is very, very interesting, right? Speaks of you being a, a follower of Christ. But we can get into that too. It's, it's amazing. But Esau failed, right, to understand that. And obviously he harbored that hatred within his heart, right? He wanted to kill him. So when, when we keep, you know, sin in our hearts, obviously we're going to want to avenge, right? revenge, right? Go out there and just do whatever they did to you, but worse, or, you know, go, and that's the work of the flesh. So when you realize that they're, they're going to stand before the Lord, they're going to be judged for everything they've done, and God is the one who's going to do it. When He does it, He does it perfectly, right? does it justly, which means they're really going to get it. And But when you realize that, it should humble you, and it should break you to tears, so that you come and you work out whatever situation is between you guys, and you your goal is to restore them back onto the Lord, because you recognize that the sin is a you know abounding, and you don't want to take part in you know planting seeds of sin, right? So you want to go in there and destroy it if you think it's going to grow into a big huge tree and kill other people, right? So we got to be very careful. So instead, you have a broken heart for them, right? And you go to them and you restore them back onto the Lord in any way possible that we can, right? By giving the word. Um, what do you think? Huh? Just kind of throwing those things out there. Uh. Well, let's, let's finish this. Here's Jacob's mother. Um, <coughs> Jacob's mother was afraid. Look at verse 42. It says, um, and the words of Esau, her older son, were told to Rebekah. So she was sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Surely your brother Esau comforts himself concerning you by intending to kill you. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice. Arise, flee to my brother Laban in Haran, and stay with him a few days until your brother's fear turns away, until your brother's anger turns away from you. He actually will stay there another 20 years, right? Not a couple of days. And he forgets what he, you have done to him. How, could, how would he forget that in a couple of days? <laughs> I don't know. Then I'll send it and bring you from there. Why should I be bereaved also of you both in one day? And Rebecca said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. <laughs> and if Jacob takes the wife of the daughters of Heth, like these who are the daughters of the land, what good will my life be to me? So obviously she's like, I'm weary of my life here for my son Jacob. Oh, Jacob, right? And Isaac's like, oh, whatever, go ahead, let him go, right? Like, but she's lying, right? Here's, here's her second plan coming in. You know, here, Jacob, here's my first plan. Oh, it didn't work. Here's my second plan. Oh, let's see if this will work, right? Let's, let's, let's help you out because obviously you're going to die. Um, but it's just, it's interesting how it all turns out, right? We already know it, but God's plan is always perfect, not our plans, right? We always try to help the Lord and, you know, but we need to trust in the Lord. We need to wait on the Lord. We need to, you know, at these times they get tough. And this is me personally, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening right now where I just got to back off and say, 
whatever you want. <laughs> you know, like, it's all yours, Lord. Doesn't even matter. But when we stop and we ask the Lord to forgive us, you know, if we're choosing to walk in a direction of sin, and we give up and we head the other direction, then God comes in and He encourages us. He restores us. Right? We start to hear from Him, and we're like, you know, we're blessed. We begin to <clears throat> sing to Him, and we're now we're doing those things that you know it was amazing when we first met the Lord. And it's just all coming natural, you know? And it's because that sin, that burden, that yoke, that, you know, it's it's gone. So it's a good thing. God even says uh, in Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So I love it. I love the, the person of Jesus, right? You know, that we can always come to the Lord. Do you want to add anything there? Nope. Okay. So, all right, let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, this chapter. There's so much here, and I know I kind of flew through it really fast, but I uh, pray that you would help us to take heed to uh, Jacob's life, Lord, and Esau, and, and Isaac, and just seeing uh, this plan that has uh, been brought out, Lord, and been exposed, and uh, how it never works out, Lord. Let it be an example to us. If there's any area in our lives, Lord, that we're trying to uh, conjure up or do something or make, Lord, happen, we, we ask, Lord, that you would come in and destroy it, that you would help us to grant, it, grant us grace, Lord, to repent of those things, whatever it may be, and to turn to you, Lord, to realize that there's nothing that we can do that is not seen by you. And uh, we just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.